Hi everybody and welcome to the Surface Interval in association with the Two Minute Foundation. So wreck diving is a staple for a lot of scuba divers. Uh, it's a way to literally dive into the past and explore places that few people can ever have seen. Inside shipwrecks is a fascinating place to be where industrial architecture is combined with natural structures growing on it. And there's often interesting shiny stuff to look at, uh, but no touch, and only look. Shipwrecks can be deceiving though. They're inherently more complicated than just open water. And there are a few things that you need to remember if you want to go diving in and around shipwrecks. They are dangerous. Don't get complacent with them. I'm sure everything was going perfectly fine right up until something went wrong. So if you're thinking about delving into a shipwreck, here's five things to remember when wreck diving. Inside shipwrecks are usually quite cramped. Uh, if you're all over the place with your arms and legs just flailing around, you're gonna be bumping into stuff. You need to think small thoughts inside of a wreck because most ships are built to be fairly snug on the inside. Passages and hatches tend to be small inside, and whilst you are wearing a skin-tight wetsuit, your BCD and your tank are all a little unusual to you. Try and stay in the centre of passages, because if you're too high, then your regulator is going to be the first thing to smash into something above you. Small, gentle fin kicks as well. It's not a race, uh, so consider the wash from your fins and what that wash is doing. Actually bumping into things can be quite dangerous if uh, to you and others. If you follow the diver in front too close, a little movement of their fins can knock your mask off. Best case, you just grab your mask and you clear it quickly. But can you clear your mask or even recover and then clear your mask whilst maintaining your buoyancy within a meter or two? Shipwrecks are quite fragile as well. They've got rusty, sharp edges of metal. They're very dangerous if you're just kind of floating around. And silt collects inside shipwrecks, both on the deck and on the ceiling too. So too much fin movement can just stir it all up and just obliterate visibility for hours. Small movements and a small profile inside of a wreck. You wanna try and keep your footprint inside there to be as minimal as possible. Wrecks are an overhead environment, so the danger level immediately goes up as soon as you swim inside. You need to have an impeccable sense of direction and an impeccable dive brief before the dive so that you can navigate the complicated internal passages safely. Remember that compasses are pretty useless inside of a giant steel shell and not all shipwrecks are completely upright as well. A lot of them are actually listing over to one side or they're completely upside down. So there's carpet on the walls and windows on the floor. It can take a while for your head to get right. If you need to, try and write it all down on a slate and even draw a little deck plan if that helps you. Or better, lay a guideline. If you lose all visibility because the silt has just been stirred up, a map on your wrist isn't going to be that useful. What is useful is a guideline that begins at the exit and that has followed your exact path to where you are now. It doesn't matter if you get turned around or if you, if you can't see one inch in front of your face. If you have a guideline, you can follow that out to open water. If you are worried about following the guideline deeper into the wreck, that's why we have line markers that literally point towards the exit. Just like wrecks laying on their side, shipwrecks don't always sink on flat ground. A lot of shipwrecks sit with their bow at one depth and their stern at another. So by just swimming straight along a passageway, you're actually going deeper and deeper or you're ascending. And because your bearing is kind of reset because you don't have that horizon, it's so easy to just ascend too quickly without even thinking about it. It's super easy to lose your depth and if you're not paying attention you can actually lose your buoyancy as well and either stick to the ceiling because you're ascending too quickly or scraping along the deck because you haven't adjusted your buoyancy as you go down. Even on a flat bottom the top deck of a wreck is at one point but the bottom and other features will be at different depths. Whilst you're looking around the wreck it's very easy to ignore your depth and just kind of swim around looking at things when you're actually changing your depth. 
Unlike on a reef, parts of a shipwreck can kind of force you to ascend or descend to avoid an obstacle or to reach a passageway. Check your depth and think about the depth of each point of a wreck. So if you find yourself reaching a certain point during the dive, in the back of your mind, you kind of already know how deep it is because you've gone through that briefing. Navigating around shipwrecks is fun. There's always something to look at and another corner to kind of look around, but if you're too busy looking at all of the interesting shiny things and parts of the shipwreck, then you're not looking at your gauges. Most divers don't check their gauges often enough at the best of times, but it's important to keep on top of it inside of a shipwreck. It's fairly complicated as it is to share air in open water, but in a confined space, you don't want to be running out of air and trying to find your buddy before exiting together. You need to allow extra gas to get out of the shipwreck and then ascend to the surface. As soon as you enter an overhead environment, you need to be more conservative with your remaining air supply. You need to allow an extra for contingency in a problem. You can't just swim straight up to the surface. You may need to double back and swim a little bit before you can exit. And in some cases, you may need to go further in to exit sooner. A good rule of thumb is to aim to exit the wreck with more than a third of your gas remaining. So always check your gas and if you're getting a little bit too low for comfort, it's time to get out. People have often died in shipwrecks and in a few cases there are still human remains inside of some shipwrecks. So take them seriously and do pay them the respect that they deserve. A lot of new shipwrecks are purposely sunk. After the ship has been decommissioned, they sink it on purpose. They're okay. People usually haven't died to put the shipwreck there, but you should still leave it how you found it. Key areas are often polished by divers as they pass, so glass gauges on things and name plaques and stuff. That's kind of okay, it's preserving the history of the wreck and it isn't damaging the wreck specifically, but taking things that's an obvious no-no. Things should be left the way they are as you found them. Shipwrecks where people have died are effectively grave sites. And if you're picking things up and taking them, it's like stealing from a graveyard. It's, it's just not the done thing. And you don't want to be that guy. Also, look into the history of the shipwreck and its layout as well. Because for some shipwrecks, there are areas that you just don't go. Some are specifically welded shut uh, in key areas to ensure that divers don't go poking around those areas. But when you're down there, try and remember the history. As with all of scuba diving, it's important to minimize your footprint when you're actually in the water. Shipwrecks are already fragile and they're disappearing pretty quickly in the grand scheme of things. But it's also important to remember how dangerous it can be for you to enter shipwrecks without the correct training, experience and equipment. So do be careful. So what are your top tips for wreck diving? Let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the Two Minute Foundation. They're a charity with the sole focus of cleaning up our local beaches and the local environments. Check out the Two Minute Foundation and download the Beach Clean app to see how you can help. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving. Music